Λοιπόν, καλησπέρα σα και πάλι. Καλώ ήρθατε. Πολλοί από εμά έχουμε επιστρέψει πλέον σε ένα πιο κανονικό ωράριο και σε μια κανονικότητα γενικότερα και γι' αυτό το λόγο και εμείς αλλάξαμε την ώρα που γίνονται τα webinars και αντί για 12 που τα κάναμε όλο αυτό το διάστημα της καραντίνας, τα αλλάξαμε και τα κάνουμε πλέον στις 4 η ώρα για να μπορούν όλοι να συμμετέχουν. Ε, για όσους δεν γνωριζόμαστε, είμαι η Μαρία Λαϊνά, Διευθύντρια Ανάπτυξη και Αποφύτων του Αμερικανικού Κολεγίου Ελλάδος και μαζί με τη συνάδελφό μου, τη Χριστίνα Τιχάντζου, την οποία δεν βλέπετε, είναι πάλι πίσω από το λογότυπο του Κολεγίου, σας καλωσορίζουμε στο 7ο κατά σειρά webinar, το οποίο παρουσιάζουν απόφοιτοι του Αμερικανικού Κολεγίου Ελλάδος. Η σημερινή παρουσίαση θα γίνει στα αγγλικά ε, και λόγω του terminology, της ορολογίας που έχει, αλλά επειδή όμως το κοινό μας είναι ελληνόφωνο, από ό,τι έχουμε δει, επέλεξα να κάνω την αρχική παρουσίαση στα ελληνικά. Η κυρίως όμως παρουσίαση και το Q&A θα γίνει στα αγγλικά. Για όσους μας παρακολουθούν για πρώτη φορά, γιατί βλέπω και αρκετούς συμμετέχοντες που, μας, που ήταν μαζί μας και άλλες φορές, θα ήθελα να πω ότι ο στόχος μας μέσα από αυτά τα webinars τα οποία τα ξεκινήσαμε στις αρχές Απριλίου είναι να αποτελέσουν μία αμφίδρομη πλατφόρμα επικοινωνίας, μία πλατφόρμα διαλόγου και μεταξύ σας, γιατί έχουμε δει ότι πραγματικά γίνονται αρκετά connections και μεταξύ σας, αλλά και με το σχολείο σας και με τη δική μας την ομάδα. Και παράλληλα θέλουμε μέσα από αυτή την πλατφόρμα να δώσουμε και το βήμα στους αποφύτους μας να μιλήσουν είτε για το επαγγελματικό τους αντικείμενο, είτε για θέματα τα οποία γνωρίζουν και με τα οποία ασχολούνται και αγαπούν. Και γι' αυτό το λόγο, ακριβώς επειδή και το φάσμα, αν θέλετε, των αποφύτων του Αμερικανικού Κολεγίου Ελλάδος είναι πάρα πολύ ευρύ, γι' αυτό το λόγο επιλέξαμε και η θεματολογία να είναι επικύλη κάθε εβδομάδα και γι' αυτό το λόγο σήμερα έχουμε μαζί μας και την Αλή και την Γρηγοριάδη και το θέμα μας είναι blockchain. Τώρα, αν δεν έχετε παρακολουθήσει τα περασμένα webinars, ε, μπορείτε να βρείτε και το πρόγραμμα, αλλά και το, τα recordings και του σημερινού webinar, το οποίο θα είναι διαθέσιμο σε λίγες μέρες από τώρα, και στην πλατφόρμα μας, ACG Connect, στην ενότητα YouTube, αλλά και στα websites και του DRI, acg.edu και του peers, peers.gr, στην ενότητα Alumni Webinars. Στο τέλος της παρουσίασης, όπως πάντα, θα έχουμε χρόνο στη διάθεσή μας για Q&A, για ερωτήσεις και μπορείτε να γράφετε τις ερωτήσεις σας στο Q&A και φυσικά ότι σχόλια έχετε και στο chat και θα προσπαθήσουμε να τις απαντήσουμε όλες. Αν δεν απαντηθούν, θα απαντηθούν offline και θα λάβετε σχετική επικοινωνία από εμάς και με το recording του, του βίντεο. Ε, μπορείτε φυσικά, εάν θέλετε, όσοι δεν γνωρίζετε την σημερινή μας καλεσμένη, να επικοινωνήσετε μαζί της και μέσα από το directory της πλατφόρμας των αποφύτων ACG Connect. Η σημερινή μας καλεσμένη, λοιπόν, είναι η Αλίκη Γρηγοριάδη. Καλησπέρα, Αλίκη. Καλησπέρα. Η Αλίκη είναι μέλος του ΔΣ της Eurobank, της Ελληνικής Εταιρείας Συμμετοχών και Περιουσίας, Hellenic Corporation of Assets and Participations, συνειδρύτρια του Hellenic Blockchain Hub, σύμβουλος management σε επιχειρήσεις και startups και φυσικά απόφοιτη του DIRI. Σπούδασε marketing στο DIRI College και πήρε το MBA της από το Manchester Business School στην Αγγλία. Επίσης, έχει πιστοποίηση στο Blockchain for Business από το University College του Λονδίνου. Έχει εργαστεί σε πολυεθνικές εταιρείες όπως η ABN Amrobank και η JP Morgan ως Managing Director και ως Executive Director στη Citibank σε διεθνείς ρόλους πάντα. Τα τελευταία πέντε χρόνια ασχολείται με startups, new technologies και digital transformation projects. Σε αυτό το webinar θα μιλήσουμε για το νέο συναρπαστικό κόσμο του blockchain και των distributed ledgers και πώς Αυτά θα, είναι, θα αποτελέσουν τον καταλήτη για την ταχεία ανάπτυξη των έξυπνων πόλεων και τελικά του έξυπνου κόσμου. 
Επειδή ο χρόνος είναι περιορισμένος και το κοινό μας είναι πολύ ευρύ, με διαφορετικά επίπεδα εξοικείωσης με το θέμα, η παρουσίαση η σημερινή απευθύνεται σε ένα ευρύτερο κοινό και όχι σε ένα εξειδικευμένο κοινό και στοχεύει να δώσει τροφή για σκέψη και όχι, και όχι να εμβαθύνει. Ε, αν όμως υπάρχει ενδιαφέρον για μεγαλύτερη εμβάθυνση, ε, επικοινωνήστε και μαζί μου και με την Αλίκη και με πολύ χαρά μπορούμε να διοργανώσουμε κάτι στο, στο μέλλον. Αλίκη, I will switch to English now. Uh, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Over to you. Thank you very much, Maria. And uh, thank you very much, everybody, for being here. This is a topic that is dear to my heart. Uh, I have uh, been involved in, uh, with blockchain technology uh, the last five years. Um, when I um, worked for the first time with Startup Bootcamp uh, through a demo day, Uh, with a startup uh, that was doing KYC, Know Your Customer on Blockchain. And I wanted to tell you a little bit about it, and I'm going to start there, because I think it's, uh, it was uh, a catalyst for me to understand the importance of blockchain um, um, so many years back and, and how the journey started. So um, just to... Um, um, just to start... Um, th this is the first uh, um, uh, application that uh, that uh, this is the first application that I went uh, um, that that I saw, and uh, essentially what it says is that you know every one of us has a journey. Uh, you know we are born and we <laughs> we die at the end of the day, and that's you know our journey in between has huge amount of uh, um, uh, steps where we have to verify ourselves and who we are. You know, from the moment we, we are born, we have a birth certificate, then we have, uh, you know, we get our degree, um, we get our driver's license, we, we get a, a work contract, uh, probably we get married or we get divorced, um, we have medical records, we have bank statements. So in all these steps, we need paper and we need to prove who we are. And we don't need to do it only in person. But when we are in business, we also have to do it. If we start a business on our own, um, then uh, you know, we have to incorporate the company. We have to open accounts. We have to contract clients. Uh, we have to onboard our employees. We have to, do, you know, to work with auditors and exter external auditors. We have, uh, at some point, uh, probably we're going to sell the company or uh, you know, exit the company. So, There, we also need a lot of um, uh, trail of, you know, the company exists or it doesn't, uh, you know, and, and, uh, and all the papers that we need in between. So um, these, how do we do it? At the moment, and for a long period of time, we were doing it manually. Uh, they were asking us for a lot of different things, you know, get your electricity bill or get your birth certificate, get your uh, degree and copies of your degree in paper, on paper. So um, that was really inconvenient because we needed to run everywhere and to try and get all these papers. Um, what do we need uh, to make this efficient? What would be the wishful thing to do? Probably to get something global. Oops, sorry. Get a global digital infrastructure which is secure and which is smart. It can concentrate everything and it can, it can do everything itself. Uh, that would be the ideal thing to do. Um, up to a few years back, we only had the cloud. Uh, and the cloud was great, you know, and, uh, or we had uh, proprietary systems within our organizations. Um, so is the cloud the global digital infrastructure that we wish for? Is a, a SaaS model, a, a, serv a, a software as a service model the right thing to do, to have? If we have that, you know, there are SaaS providers like Experian, like Thomson Reuters, like Salesforce, a lot of different companies that concentrate information for us. And uh, at the moment, this is done on the cloud and uh, is done uh, through a, a consensus, is given through that intermediary, which means that uh, uh, we have to ask 
permission to get into that database and we have to ask them to transfer information of ours somewhere else. And many times it's not done electronically, we have to download that, print it, and then go and present it to the different areas that uh, uh, they need to have it. So what does that mean? You know, a lot of cloud um, um, uh, services that we have, they have to be replicated in different countries because if we need, let's say, uh, to transfer the data to a different country or a different continent, many times the uh, legislators do not allow us to do that. This means that we have to replicate the cloud. So portability of that data is not necessarily uh, available through the cloud. And then uh, we have uh, concentration. Um, or we have one intermediary that is doing anything and there is a single po point of failure. Uh, you know, who has the liability? If we look, I keep going backwards. If we look at central databases and uh, the way they have worked, please don't read all that. I just wanted to show you, to inundate you with a lot of uh, uh, cases, uh, just to see that all these uh, um, cases, they, uh, the, 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 the databases have been hacked and information has been taken away from them. So information of you and I and everybody else has been taken away. And we are talking about millions uh, of, uh, of, uh, uh, an, uh, of uh, uh, pieces of information of ours that has been taken away. And the fines are massive. Um, so what is the possibility then if... Um, if the cloud has all these problems, could the possibility be a blockchain? So what I would like us to do is to see if there is a way, if we know what blockchain is. Maria, we can't hear you. Okay, so uh, let we will do a quick poll on blockchain. You can uh, select your answers. Of course, multiple choices can exist as well. So you can answer now so that we can see what we think about what blockchain is. Do, do the audience know where to get the... Um... You can see the, the poll. You can see the poll in front of you and you can choose. There are several options like network, database, computer, shared, robust and secure. Move. Move. <laughs> Bitcoin. Bitcoin. I hope you can all see the poll. If not, let us know on chat so that we can change it because I don't see, I cannot see any answers. It says host and uh, panelists can't vote. Yes, we cannot vote. I see that we have seven answers. Okay, you have. But because I don't I see, see them. Okay, if you can all vote. Perfect, thank you. I see on chat that everybody has submitted the answers. Not everybody, 10 have voted. But I cannot see the answers, so Christina will help me out here. Christina, you can write on chat because we cannot see the percentage. Ah, oh, perfect, so okay. <laughs> so we have the answers. Okay. Wow, it's a Legos building block. Okay, excellent. <laughs> of course it is. So these are the answers. We can close and proceed. Unless you want to comment, Aliki. So we can see, you know, network, uh, database, and shared and robust and secure mainly. Uh, a couple of people talked about Bitcoin and uh, platform for apps. 
okay mm -hmm. and uh, the rest is just uh, fun it seems but uh, i don't see the computer there but it's okay yeah we can close shall i close oh yeah i closed it excellent so okay so i saw bitcoin bitcoin right in one of the um choices and bitcoin and blockchain many people talk about these two together so my question is is then big blockchain the bitcoin so uh, thankfully i did not see that in the answers mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that's good because uh, the blockchain is essentially the new environment, the ecosystem inside which Bitcoin exists. And uh, when I say the new ecosystem is very much characterized many times as the new internet. And uh, that's what I want to talk about. Uh, I want to explain what I mean. So if we look at the internet, the existing internet, and uh, I, I'm going to make it a picture so people can uh, identify with it more. So if the internet is like a highway, like a road, uh, it's a network that transfers data and forgets about it. Like the same way as a highway just transfers cars from uh, uh, Athens to Salonika, let's say, and then it forgets about them. It doesn't know that they went through. It just takes them through. So what do you need in order to know that a car has gone through a specific part of the road? You need an intermediary. You need a camcorder or you need a person or you need a policeman to give you a fine because you're speeding or something or a satellite, something that is looking at it and sees you somewhere, your car, in that, uh, on that road. So that's the internet. And if that's the internet, then blockchain is a mutated highway. It's, it's like a mutated highway. It's a new generation of the internet. It's like, you know, its core is changing. So what it means is that now the camcorder is becoming part of it. It's all coming together, it's not separate. So now it has memory and it has computation ability. So suddenly it's becoming a computer also. It starts remembering, it records and it calculates what it transfers without an intermediary. And that's the important thing. So. Thank you, Aliki. <laughs> so the new internet um, is here. And I try here to explain with different colors. Um, there are three elements that we are looking when we are looking at the system in very high terms when we are looking at, the, at an ecosystem the one is the protocol is like the architectural design of you know the whole logic around you know what we do and how this whole thing works we have the network element which is the one that transfers things and we have the applications on top the ones that we see the ones that we interact uh, every day like facebook uh, or Google, or, you know, these are the applications that we are using mm -hmm. in our life. So the point is, these all three, the internet, as you can see, is this yellow thing. It has the two elements, the protocol and the network, and it needs the camcorder. It needs the application on top for that to be able to see what is happening in that network. The blockchain, on the other hand, is that new internet, the all-encompassing thing that includes inside the whole logic, the application part as well. So the blockchain is a distributed ledger with automatic algorithmic consensus, and you don't need an intermediary. Aliki, uh, one question. What's an algorithmic consensus? Can you explain? Sure. Um, I'll, I'll try and explain again with pictures because I think that's, uh, you know, for the people that don't understand, it may be easier. So this is, this is one of my favorite things. So imagine yourselves, imagine all of us being here, being, being part of this crowd and uh, watching an amazing air show. And we see these airplanes, uh, you know, doing all sorts of uh, aerobatic, fantastic things. And uh, as we are watching it, suddenly, two of them collide and we have a crash. 
and then fire starts. They fall down and uh, the whole crowd, you know, goes crazy. Uh, you know, ambulances come, the police comes. And the police starts asking what is going on. Uh, and they're not asking everybody together. They're taking each individual person from us and they are taking statements. So each one of us separately and all of us together eventually, we share a truth. And that truth is that at a particular point in time, let's say lunchtime, these two planes crashed. So if one of us, let's say, was watching at their um, uh, screen of their mobile phone instead of watching the, the air show, and they didn't watch what, what was happening, they could not possibly give the right statement, right? But that is just one person out of all the other people that were there. So even if one person or less than half of the people, they do not see what's happening, the rest they have, they create a truth. And that truth is created by each one person separately. So that is the consensus that we are arriving at, which is the consensus without having an intermediary. And um, what I would like to do here is this, so this shared truth and this consensus that we, we arrive at, as well as you know, the, the, the non-intermediary, there are two very important points uh, that constitute, that, that, that um, give the identity of a blockchain environment. And uh, what I would like to do now is to get you uh, to watch a video, because I think it's one of the better videos that they are out there, that describes very quickly uh, what the blockchain is in an animated fashion, and it's giving an example as well. And uh, let me see if I can do that. With Oops, you're not supposed to see that yet. I don't know why it's not doing it, Maria. Maria, are you okay, listening? Let's see. Yeah, yes, of course. Okay. Of course. If you can't see that now, we will say, okay. Okay. Perfect. Can you hear it? Yes. I hope the attendees can hear it as well. That powers Bitcoin. While this was its original purpose, blockchain is capable of so much more. Despite the sound of the word, there's not just one blockchain. Blockchain is shorthand for a whole suite of distributed ledger technologies that can be programmed to record and track anything of value, from financial transactions to medical records or even land titles. You might be thinking, we already have processes in place to track data. What's so special about blockchain? Let's break down the reasons why blockchain technology stands to revolutionize the way we interact with each other. Reason number one, the way it tracks and stores data. Blockchain stores information in batches called blocks that are linked together in a chronological fashion to form a continuous line, metaphorically a chain of blocks. If you make a change to the information recorded in a particular block, you don't rewrite it. Instead, the change is stored in a new block, showing that X changed to Y at a particular date and time. Sound familiar? That's because blockchain is based on the centuries-old method of the general financial ledger. It's a non-destructive way to track data changes over time. Here's one example. Let's say there was a dispute between Anne and her brother Steve over who owns a piece of land that's been in the family for years. Because blockchain technology uses the ledger method, there is an entry in the ledger showing that Adam first owned the property in 1900. When Adam sold the property to Dave in 1930, a new entry was made in the ledger and so on. Every change of ownership of this property is represented by a new entry in the ledger, right up until Anne bought it from their father in 2007. Anne is the current owner, and we can see that history in the ledger. Now, here's where things get really interesting. Unlike the age-old ledger method, originally a book, 
than a database file stored on a single system, blockchain was designed to be decentralized and distributed across a large network of computers. This decentralizing of information reduces the ability for data tampering and brings us to the second factor that makes blockchain unique. It creates trust in the data. Before a block can be added to the chain, a few things have to happen. First, a cryptographic puzzle must be solved, thus creating the block. The computer that solves the puzzle shares the solution to all of the other computers on the network. This is called proof of work. The network will then verify this proof of work, and if correct, the block will be added to the chain. The combination of these complex math puzzles and verification by many computers ensures that we can trust each and every block on the chain. Because the network does the trust building for us, we now have the opportunity to interact directly with our data in real time. And that brings us to the third reason blockchain technology is such a game changer. No more intermediaries. Currently, when doing business with one another, we don't show the other person our financial or business records. Instead, we rely on trusted intermediaries, such as a bank or lawyer, to view our records and keep that information confidential. These intermediaries build trust between the parties and are able to verify, for example, that yes, Anne is the rightful owner of this land. This approach limits exposure and risk, but also adds another step to the exchange, which means more time and money spent. If Anne's land title information was stored in a blockchain, she could cut out the middleman, her lawyer, who would ordinarily confirm her information with Steve. As we now know, all blocks added to the chain have been verified to be true and can't be tampered with, so Anne can simply show Steve her land title information secured on the blockchain. Anne would save considerable time and money by cutting out the middleman. This type of trusted peer-to-peer -peer interaction with our data can revolutionize the way we access, verify, and transact with one another. And because blockchain is a type of technology and not a single network, it can be implemented in many different ways. Some blockchains can be completely public and open to everyone to view and access. Others can be closed to a select group of authorized users, such as your company, a group of banks, or government agencies. And there are hybrid public-private blockchains too. In some, those with private access can see all the data, while the public can see only selections. In others, everyone can see all the data, but only some people have access to add new data. A government, for example, could use a hybrid system and the fact that she owns it while keeping her personal information private. Or it could allow everyone to view property records but reserve to itself the exclusive right to update them. It is the combination of all these factors, decentralizing of the data, building trust in the data, and allowing us to interact directly with one another and the data that gives blockchain technology the potential to underpin many of the ways we interact with one another. But much like the rise of the internet, this technology will bring with it all kinds of complex policy questions around governance, international law, security, and economics. Here at the Center for International Governance Innovation, we seek to bring trusted research that will equip policymakers with the information they need to advance blockchain innovations, enabling economies to flourish in this new digital economy. Learn more about our work on blockchain technology by visiting our website and social media channels. Aleki, we heard on the video a lot of things and it was very interesting and useful because with the use of all this, you know, the schematic use, it was very, I, I hope, you know, easily understood. Um, but we also heard about the notion of blockchain and distributed ledgers. What is the difference between the two? Uh, thank you, Maria. Um, the, the difference uh, between the two is that uh, blockchain is a sub element of a distributed ledger. So it is a distributed ledger. Distributed ledgers are bigger. Blockchains are a part. They are a, a, a type of distributed ledger. However, because it was the first one that came about, 
uh, we call them everything a blockchain as opposed to distributed ledgers or some some people do so it has mm -hmm. become a generic name the same way as aspirin has become for a painkiller or a vacuum clean mm -hmm. or a hoover has become for vacuum cleaner or mm -hmm. a zodiac has become for uh, an inflatable um, boat so um, mm -hmm. This is why, so blockchain, there are differences. You can see them here. Um, so blockchain is here with the white. Uh, it's, it's public, it's permissionless. So nobody, everybody can, can go in and uh, uh, everybody can, uh, you know, type something on it. And anyone can mine it, can create the consensus, you know, be part of it uh, and they can vote if they want to change it or not. Mm -hmm. um, so blockchains are mainly on the public domain. The distributed ledgers, uh, they include everything. They include public, federated, and private chains. They are, they, they are ecosystems that can exist within a corporation only, within a mm -hmm. consortium, and even within the public environment. And we have different distributed ledgers that uh, in, you know, in each one of the categories. Uh, usually the other ones, the non-public ones, they are permissioned. Um, also the, the distributed ledger that's public like repo is mm -hmm. also a permissioned one. Um, in some instances, uh, as we heard in the video, uh, you have the possibility to certain people have the possibility to, to insert information while all the people have the ability to view or the other way around. So uh, one of the main differences of blockchains is you know, the block structures. We call them blockchains because they are transactions that they have been put into blocks uh, while in other distributed ledgers, you don't have this structure. Um, or um, also the sequence, you know, the blocks and data. You don't necessarily have the same thing in distributed ledgers um, in general, which are not blockchains. And uh, also you don't necessarily have currencies in other distributed ledgers that are federated. You don't need to have those currencies because you don't need to um, reward somebody that is creating the consensus. The, you know, it's part of the, of the federal, uh, federated environment mm -hmm. and uh, you, you don't need to do that. Or uh, the main difference is the consensus that we talked about. And you can see the video. But now there are other uh, ways like the proof of stake, the proof of importance, et cetera, et cetera. Why? Because the proof of work was the all encompassing uh, uh, thing that everybody has the ability to prove, to create that consensus, you know, see that plane and say it crashed. Um, that requires huge amount of energy to be consumed. And the transactions that can go through for this kind of valuation, they are very few. Uh, because everybody has to agree. Now you need to judge how you're going, you know, the risk associated between having full transparency with everybody giving consensus versus having a selected group of people like 300 people, 1,000 people, as opposed to 7 million people, you know, give, giving that consensus. And uh, that uh, makes it easier, makes it, makes it quicker. So you can pump through many more transactions into a chain, into, sorry, in a, into a distributed ledger like that. Therefore, um, uh, uh, the, these are the kind of differences, but I don't want to go into detail of the technical part. If people want, they can look at it. Perfect. Thank you. So, um, so essentially, here, what uh, this means, as you saw, is that blockchain, now I'm going to be calling distributed ledgers blockchain. Um, uh, so blockchain enables new ways to do business. So here, I'm not talking only about the blockchain blockchain, I'm talking about all the distributed ledgers. And it's estimated that by 2030, the market for blockchain and, and DLTs are, are going to be approximately $3 trillion uh, dollars worth. Um, 
I think what's important to understand is that uh, this is now a trusted environment for trading transactions, any type of transaction. Why? Because the real world now is transforming through this blockchain, through the distributed ledgers to a digital world. And we have different types of assets. So any asset we have in the real world, a piece of land, uh, money, uh, anything can be transformed. So we have non-fungible assets, uh, assets that exist only on the web, only, only in, the, in the ecosystem. And then we have fungible assets. Uh, those assets are the ones that we are talking about. They can be cryptocurrency, or digital currency. They can be tokens, loyalty uh, uh, tokens, security tokens. They can be uh, um, uh, anything, uh, uh, energy units, uh, or they can be fuel uh, to, to pump into the chain uh, or, or you know, the environment to be able to buy uh, you know, to reward the people that are doing the consensus. And, uh, um... So, one question. You mentioned at the beginning of the presentation that the validation of the existence of our personal data, like the birth certificate, the marriage certificate and all of that, can be stored on the blockchain. Now, what comes to mind when we are talking about storage of data, uh, is GDPR, data protection. How is this related to the GDPR, to the okay. data protection? Yeah, that's a very good question. Thank you for that. So what I said originally uh, is not that we are going to store the actual data in there. So we are not going to store our passport. We are not going to store our ID. Uh, we are not going to store our health documents on the blockchain or on the whatever chain um, uh, distributed ledger. We are going to store the hash that, so the, the uh, uh, encrypted mechanism that shows that, that verifies that those documents exist and they are real and they belong to us. And uh, so, so when we look at the chain, there is nothing that we actually recognize. It's like scribble things. And uh, it's certainly not our passport picture and um, our details of how tall we are or when we were born. Um, and, and that's great because uh, you, know, you cannot really see them. The other thing that's very important is that now we have through the mechanism, through this infrastructure, for the client themselves to be able to have, we don't have um, a big database that belongs to somebody. So Facebook does not hold our information and our pictures anymore. It is us that hold them inside our own computer. And what exists on the chain is just the verification that we have them. Therefore now having a private and a public key on what we allow and not to transfer to other parties, we are the owners of our own destiny. Therefore, it's absolutely co compliant with GDPR because we can tap you know, our, our uh, uh, phone and unlock the little box that says, I want to send to my new employer my, uh, the verification that I have a certificate from DRE or from you know, peers. Uh, that is uh, that I graduated and it's me and it's real so we don't need anymore to do it and I am the one that's doing that the uh, the other party the bank the employer they cannot come to peers or to Diri directly and take it I give that authority I don't it's I, I'm creating though the infrastructure underneath so I can do it without needing to download, to take a piece of paper and take it to somebody because that can be forged anyway. So it's becoming much more secure. It's really giving the power back to the individual to handle their own data and it connects. It connects all the environment, as you can see on this slide, the public sector, the banks, 
the, uh, the client onboarding, supply and onboarding, markets, employee onboarding, anything we want uh, with one click, potentially. So did I answer your question? Yes, you did. You did. Super. Thank you. So what I wanted to mention then here, if this is bringing us towards a smarter society and you know, towards smart nations, um, I wanted to, to, to give you my understanding of that. So if you look at the first layer at the top up here, this talks about the inventory of things, the inventory of data and of the people and of the services that we constantly interact. And those are becoming smart in this new environment that we are in. So we have smart cities, smart factories, smart homes, uh, social, social web, uh, you know, digital markets, digital commerce, we have uh, smart logistics, all sorts of different things, you know, applications that relate to our everyday life. And then we have a second layer, which is the inventory of value. So the first one of the goods and services, the second that underpins all that is the inventory of capital, the inventory of value, how we exchange all those assets, how do they change hands? Who owns them? Um, you know, how do we uh, take one and, and pay, uh, you know, to, to acquire? So, you, you know, you have that layer there. So at the bottom of that, that underpins the whole ecosystem is the smart inventory of cryptographic proof and truth. Is the way that all of this can be enabled to be done without an intermediary. And that's what blockchain can really achieve. They can, it can authenticate, it can secure, it can identify, it can provide auditability. So um, that's how, this is, this is my favorite slide because it brings the world uh, of today together with you know, the data that we need and the ownership and together with the trust that we need to have in a trustless society for us to be able to achieve a smart economy and smart nations. So unless you have questions on that, uh, perhaps I can move into some uh, use cases. Uh, that uh, I can talk about because there are a lot around the world and there are a few also in Greece. Uh, so if I start uh, uh, one of the amazing ones uh, I would like to talk about is Estonia. Estonia created it's really the first uh, e-government that is fully blockchained uh, and it's fully digital. It's a, the whole country uh, is, is totally digital. You can e-vote, you can ask all the services that you want through. It's a smart economy on its own. And it utilizes the KSI blockchain, which is uh, the one that they developed, especially for Estonia. And uh, other countries are looking at uh, you know, utilizing it. Estonia has become the best practice and everybody is looking at Estonia, how they did it, you know, what they did, and they try to bring it into their own economies as well. Um, another interesting um, uh, proposition that's happening right now is in Dubai. Dubai wants to become blockchain enabled, uh, uh, you know, the whole of Dubai and the, and, the, and the Emirates. However, this one is interesting. It's the paperless airport. Um, the, this means that when you enter uh, the airport of Dubai from wherever you come, you won't need a passport. Uh, Dubai will know where you are before you board the plane from wherever you do. And that is going, you're not going to stay in any queues. You're not going to wait, you know, to, to pass the passport control. It's going to know where you are and how you navigate uh, in the country. It's, uh, it, it, you know, it, it, you can buy things at the airport uh, with tokens that you have, you know, on your mobile. You don't need anymore. You are verified from the first moment before you enter the country that it's you. So, it's going to be paperless, it's going to be fully automated. 
Um, another interesting one is a combination between, uh, uh, you know, in Canada, between banks, Secure uh, Key and uh, the IBM, um, uh, the Hyperledger, and uh, uh, they are looking at digital ID. Um, so it, what Canada is doing right now, it's been uh, worked on in many, many, many different countries. So many of them are looking at digital IDs, utilizing the blockchain. Um, the next one is very interesting that Finland has done. I saw that there are a couple of uh, uh, people uh, that are doing uh, charity and volunteering in the audience. And uh, I think that's, that's extremely interesting. What Finland is doing is through blockchain, it's registering and it's providing the benefits to the refugees. The refugees, when they enter the country, they do not have an ID. They don't, you know, they're coming from a place where probably everything they had has been destroyed. And now, through the, with the help of the blockchain technology, now they can start having an ID and they can start functioning in the society. They start having that number. They can be traced where they are, how they get their money. Nobody can take their money apart from them. Uh, you know, nobody can fool them. You know, it's, it's a, a way that Finland has decided, uh, you know, to utilize blockchain for this. Um, something that relates to um, uh, supply chains, which is very interesting, it's the port of Rotterdam. Uh, there are some people in here that they have uh, been, you know, studying and uh, operating in, uh, uh, in, uh, in Holland. And uh, also they, have, they are working for Dutch uh, banks like Rabobank and, and a lot of other uh, uh, institutions. Um, so what Rotterdam has done with uh, Eben Amro and Samsung uh, is to create the first paperless, instantly financed, and constantly traced container from Korea all the way to uh, Amsterdam, to, to Rotterdam, sorry, to the port of Rotterdam and to go into, you know, everything without anybody, uh, you know, uh, needing to be, you know, validating or doing anything on that, uh, you know, the whole container to be in the warehouse of uh, Samsung uh, at, at, uh, in, in Holland. Um, other thing that's extremely interesting as well is Trade IX, the Marco Polo project, a, a consortium of uh, banks, of logistics companies, global, uh, and they are looking at the whole uh, finance and you know, uh, supply implementation, etc., of trade and trade finance globally for both small, medium, and uh, big uh, corporations. Uh, another very interesting one is BitPesa. BitPesa is uh, in Africa, and it's, it's linking and it's allowing or enabling uh, small and medium enterprises in Africa that do business with people anywhere around the world, other companies in China or Indonesia or America. Uh, to be able to transfer funds uh, for the people that are in banking, and there are a few in the audience, you know that uh, Africa does not uh, have SWIFT everywhere. So SWIFT is the network that we use usually in banking, you know, to transfer funds cross-border. So they only have, they mainly have M-Pesa, which is mobile payments. So this BitPesa is utilizing this way and they are transferring instead of taking, you know, forever to transfer a payment, um, you know, from the, the, the country with the specific currency into a dollar, go through the US and into Asia, um, you know, and then change to the other currency. They're utilizing the Bitcoin blockchain and they are converting, shifting, and changing on the other side instantaneously. This takes seven minutes and it costs a tiny fraction of what it costs uh, to transfer a payment 
uh, through our existing infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And what that means, it gives amazing liquidity, working capital ability, uh, you know, to small and medium uh, enterprises in uh, Africa, uh, which they need it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Much more efficient <laughs> process. Exactly. So can we go to Greece? I mean, very quickly for yeah. one or two examples. I know that we don't have a lot of cases in Greece, but we do have a few. Yes. So in Greece, uh, I have in here a couple of cases. One is uh, something that uh, um, we have created at the, uh, uh, it, it is a YEOSE initiative because YEOSE is a subsidiary of ours. And uh, what they do, they are working on a framework that is going to be utilized blockchain. And it's going to look at all the assets that YEOSE has. Uh, YEOSE has all the fixed assets. Uh, you know, from landscapes and to, to rails, you know, that exist in a, into old train stations, et cetera, et cetera. So all these assets are going to be all recorded and they're going to be managed on a blockchain environment, uh, which is fantastic. It's the first time that uh, we are going to do that anywhere uh, in our uh, uh, public companies. And then uh, we have the come mm -hmm. together. It's another one. They come together. They just won, or they just won an award, uh, along with some other people uh, at the um, uh, EU um, uh, hackathon uh, for uh, the virus, for the how we are over, we are going to overcome the COVID nineteen. And come together is a Greek company that used to do um, on blockchain, uh, used to do events and uh, ticketing. Uh, so you can have trusted ticketing uh, that people can buy instead of being ripped off, uh, you know, by in the black market. Uh, it was more visible and now they pivoted their proposition and they are going to be a, 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 a certification of immunity place where, you know, whoever is immune uh, and they have the certificate, they can store it that they are immune. Uh, which is great, you know, and it's very yeah. current. Interesting. Uh, there are a lot of other things uh, mm -hmm. that are happening um, in, in Greece. Uh, I don't know if you want me to go through them. Well, we are conscious of the time, Maliki, because um, I would like to have some time for the questions. So uh, overall, we do have around 10 or 15 minutes for, for the Q&A as well. So uh, I don't think we can go through more examples, but okay. we can provide additional information when we send out the communication. Okay, fantastic. If I may, one is that uh, a, a good friend of mine, an ex-colleague of mine is here and uh, he's uh, very high up at 3M. And uh, I want to mention that uh, 3M is using, not necessarily in Greece, uh, the Microsoft Azure blockchain already. And uh, it's storing, it has created a label as a service uh, where they're giving smart labels uh, to make sure that the, the, there is uh, transparency and there is validity for pharmaceuticals, for the pharmaceutical industry, which is amazing what they're doing. And... Um, a lot of other people here work uh, in companies that they have blockchain related initiatives. So um, I, I, I'm not going to go through it, but uh, the, the last thing I wanted to say and close is that we are going through the uh, industrial revolution uh, four uh, right now. And we can see here very clearly that, uh, you know, there are a lot of different um, technologies that underpin this uh, smart environment that we, we have. And blockchain is a catalyst for all of that to work effectively. And the last thing that I want to say and close is that as you can see, the previous industrial revolutions happened at, the, uh, at, a, very, at a normal kind of pace. Now, at the fourth, we are just at the corner of this. We are at the curve. And now with all these technologies that are coming, the every change, you know, the, the, 
the time that passed between revolutions was nearly 100 years each time. And the last one was 50 years, so it was halved. Now it's going to be much less the, le the next revolution. And they, this is facilitated through blockchain and through all the other technologies coming together. That is a major change that our regulators, our societies, and we cannot handle unless we think very carefully, very quickly, and with huge agility. Thank you. Thank you very much, Aliki. Uh, it was a very interesting presentation. Uh, that's a very big topic, so it can definitely not be covered in an hour. Uh, but I think we, we try to cover all the basic things. So we do have questions. I see one question. Um, so the question is, how do I join a blockchain as an individual to perform a transaction with some other party? How do we get in a blockchain ecosystem? Um, I, as an individual, first of all, you can create a blockchain. Uh, if you want to get into an existing blockchain ecosystem, and I'm not talking about the federated ones, because as an individual, you wouldn't necessarily be able to do it, uh, because the federated ones right now are the ones that uh, uh, relate to corporates. Uh, so if you're a company, you can, but as, a, as an individual, you would probably go to public chain, right? And that would be uh, uh, through a wallet. Uh, so you would need to go through one of the existing wallets or exchanges, you know, open a wallet, uh, get a crypto that relates to those exchanges and start interacting, uh, you know, into, into that environment. Or, you know, go to uh, somebody that knows how to help you, uh, you know, write on the chain what you would like to write. To write. But it's, 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 it can be easy, it can be um, depending what you want to do. If you want to only um, uh, exchange value, you can just join a wallet and a, and a, um, a, a clearing mechanism if you want. Uh, but if you want to do more than that, if you want to participate, to vote, to change something on that, the way it works, the way the consensus works, etc., then you will have to be a little bit more technical. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I see that someone raised a hand, but I don't have the question. So can you please write the question on the Q&A? Ah, okay. So very positive comments, Aliki. Great webinar. Someone needs to leave to go to the next call. Okay, thank you. Okay, so there is one, if you can write the question on the Q&A, we will try to, Aliki will try to answer it. So I don't see it yet. It's from Magdalene. If you can please write your question. Okay. How, okay, the question is, how can an author use blockchain? An author. Um, th there are blockchains right now that, uh, public chains, and uh, federated that they are looking at royalties uh, so mm -hmm. an author a person of the arts a person uh, a, a singer uh, they can utilize blockchain by registering their work on it so every time that their work is used in a specific ecosystem which has the blockchain right now then the royalties that they have on the book uh, they are going to go back to them. And that's uh, happening because of the smart contracts that we can have on the chain. And they are pieces of code that they are input into uh, the, the specific uh, chains. And uh, as their book is sold or is read or whatever, you know, in the primary or secondary market, um, they can receive um, um, uh, funds. Mm -hmm. So I don't see any other questions. If you have any other questions, please write them in the Q&A. I see positive comments and thank you for, uh, from the attendees. 
this is definitely a topic which is very current and even though it's relatively new because it's not very new but it's relatively new uh, it's something that apparently we are going to uh, we are going to see it more and more uh, even in our daily lives so okay since apparently there are no uh, further the, questions the, the only thing yep. I, that i would like to say is that mm -hmm. quite a lot of you as i as i scroll down the names and i see where you work mm -hmm. um, the, the, you, you do have in your companies, either in Greece or abroad, there are at the moment proof of concepts or live blockchains that or cooperations with blockchain or with other institutions that do blockchains like, uh, you know, uh, Ote is the Cosmote is doing that or uh, uh, Singular Logic or, you know, there are a huge amount of companies that are doing mm -hmm. it. So if you don't know it, please go and, and search for it and uh, you will be amazed at what's happening right now in the world. Aleki, ευχαριστούμε πολύ. Κάνω switch τώρα στα ελληνικά. Ευχαριστούμε πάρα πολύ για την πολύ ενδιαφέρουσα παρουσίαση. Ε, βλέπω σχόλια εδώ στο chat. Εννοείται ότι θα κάνουμε post το βίντεο, όπως και όλα τα υπόλοιπα και μπορείτε να το δείτε με την ησυχία σας όποτε θέλετε. Θα το κάνουμε post και στην πλατφόρμα των αποφύτων ACT Connect, καθώς και στα websites και στο DIRI και στο PIRS, οπότε μπορείτε να το βρείτε και να το κατεβάσετε. Ευχαριστούμε πάρα πολύ για τη συμμετοχή σας. Όπως είπα και στην αρχή, αν πραγματικά ε, σας ενδιαφέρει κάποια στιγμή να εμβαθύνουμε και λίγο παρακα... παραπάνω στο θέμα, ε, πείτε μας για να μπορέσουμε να το διοργανώσουμε. Ε, ανανεώνουμε το ραντεβού μας για την επόμενη εβδομάδα, για την επόμενη Τετάρτη, πάλι στις τέσσερις, με ένα τελείως διαφορετικό θέμα αυτή τη φορά. Ο τίτλος είναι Stress and Anxiety from Neurophysiology to a Psychological Practical Guide for Everyday um, Life Health Promotion. Οπότε ένα θέμα έτσι πολύ καθημερινό, τις διαφορές μεταξύ στρες και άγχους. Σας περιμένουμε λοιπόν την επόμενη εβδομάδα. Θα στείλουμε το recording, θα στείλουμε ε, και τα στοιχεία της Αλίκης και ε, θα τα πούμε πάρα πολύ σύντομα. Ευχαριστούμε πολύ Αλίκη, ευχαριστούμε πολύ και όλους τους συμμετέχοντες. Καλή συνέχεια. Καλή συνέχεια, ευχαριστώ. Και εμείς.